Welcome to Cyclone Sports Complex for the first of two games featuring the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Iowa State Cyclones. I'm Sarah Ramont with Alan Fidelke and Alan. Tell me how important this series is. Uh, this series is pretty crucial, and it really starts here with game one of a three-game series this weekend. Iowa State 25 and 23. This would be a big game for them to get a victory to stay above 500 to finish out the regular season, hopefully. But they should have no problem doing that if they continue to hit the ball how they did on Wednesday. And there is no joke, the Cyclones' bats were on fire. They're led off by Kelsey McFarland with a home run in game one, but it did not stop there. Allie Cappert smashes one over the right center fence. That was her first of the day. And next batter, next batter, Lexi Slater gets another home run for herself. And that was only game one. Game two, Sammy Hildreth, another home run. The series continues. And then it's Allie Cappert's turn again. She ended the day just lights out hitting for the Cyclones. It was a great confidence booster, and they won both those games. So those were crucial games to keep the Cyclones' confidence going and moving on to the series. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with your first pitch. Pam's family switched to Mediacom. You're all installed. And got faster internet and boundary-free TV with TiVo DVR. Now Jeff can stream live TV on his iPad. The kids can watch YouTube videos right on the TV. They have Mediacom TV everywhere when they're on the go. And thousands of free on-demand movies anytime. Yep, you can do a lot more on all of your devices with the combined power of faster internet and boundary-free TV from Mediacom. Your office is 1,500 acres. It's good to have the right help. With models up to 62 horsepower or 1,400 pound payload. Go tough. Go strong. Go Gator. Van Wall is proud to be your dealer of choice. Find a location online at vanwall.com. Anyone can get service in town, but US Cellular offers 4G LTE where you just wouldn't expect it. So you can watch your shows. Way out here! Stream your music. Way, way, way out here! Or check Facebook. Way, 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 out here. Pretty awesome, huh? With US Cellular, now the middle of nowhere is the middle of anywhere. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back to Cyclone Sports Complex. We just wrapped up with the national anthem here, so we're not too far away from the first pitch. This is going to be a double header today featuring the Texas Tech Red Raiders and your Iowa State Cyclones. So to start things off, we're going to take a look at some lineups. So uh, the Cyclones will take the field first, and they'll be up first for the Texas Red Raiders is Jordan Bedial, Devin Tomey, Christy Belshi, Leah Hobson. Hobson, someone to keep an eye on. Her stats have been uh, really on the rise this, these last couple of games. Then we have Ashley Fultz. Kiera Miles, Susan Welburn, uh, Brittany Warnicky, and Brooks Scott will round out the batting lineup for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And looking at the field, starting left field, we have Kathleen Bingham, followed by uh, Brittany Gomez in center field, Kelsey McFarland in right, then at third base, Nicole Antion, Lexi Slater, Maddie Reese, Jordan Spenlove, Sammy Hildreth behind the plate, and Stacey Rogantine getting the start in the circle. Rogantine has been on a roll. Um, on Wednesday, she got the victory in game one. So let's see if she can continue this uh, streak that she's got going right now. She's been pitching quite well. Something to keep an eye on, though, with Texas Tech Red Raiders, they draw a lot of walks. They are a very smart hitting team, and so that's something that the Cyclones will really have to work around. They're not going to be ones who will, uh, you know, they really take those not-so-great pitches and really work their count. So something to keep an eye on in this battle between uh, Ragantine and the Texas Tech lineup. 
we've got pretty good weather right now. Uh, as you see the forecast down there, it's 69, kind of cloudy. Uh, looks like the rain will hold off for a little bit. We're hoping to get both Hopefully. games in. <laughs> and uh, wind, somewhat of a factor. You can, the flags are kind of waving during the anthem. They weren't. So wind's in and out, but I don't think it'll be too much of a factor. Let's just hope uh, the rain stays away. Yeah, keep the rain away. It will be actually, a, even though it is an overcast day, it is a beautiful day mm -hmm. uh, for softball, especially to get a nice double header in today. And I will say cloudy days like these are kind of great for softball because the ball gets up in those clouds and it's so easy to see with the yep. yellow ball. It's kind <laughs> of actually ideal to have slightly overcast weather. So uh, hopefully the Cyclones can use that to their advantage. First up, we have Jordan Bedial. She's uh, going to be playing in center field, so both the Cyclones and the Raiders have their center fields. Uh, center fielders leading off. We'll see if she's a slapper. Um, she's starting back far enough in the box to potentially be a slap hitter, so we'll see how this thing starts. First pitch strike from nice. Rogatine. Nice pitch on the outside. It's a little. It looked a little higher from our angle, so let's see if we'll be able to get that part of the plate this game. Rogan team working the outside corner that's definitely key with a slapper is to make sure it doesn't uh, it's kind of on the end of their bat so it goes right to our fielders rather than in the gaps like they always want it to counts one and one right now for Rogan team and Betty all she's trying to attack that outside corner which you said is key especially with a slap hitter uh, like Betty all is right now so hopefully she can continue to work that outside corner and get this strikeout for the first first strikeout of the game That's going to be a blooper into left field and easily caught by Kathleen Bingham to record the first out of the game. Now that slap, that was, as slappers want, they want either want to put it in the air or kind of just hit right into the inside part of the uh, outfield, but luckily Bingham was able to read that quite nicely. It had a lot of air time on it, so even though it was drifting closer to the line, she's able to get right to it. And next up for the Red Raiders, we have Devin Tomey. Tomi's the DH, so she'll be just hitting today. First pitch ball from Rogantino. That was a little outside. There you go. She gets that first. That count is up to one and one. That first strike, again, it's been the same place that it was for those other two. So if uh, Rogantino can keep, keep getting that spot, that's really key. You see her stats right there. Uh, 91 strikeouts versus 52 walks. So hopefully she can keep that walk stat down against these Red Raiders. Looks like she just continues to work the outside of the plate. Whether it's up high or down low, it seems like she wants to keep it outside uh, away from these lefty hitters. And it looks like Tomy there was standing. Usually um, a lot of times the second batter is still in softball, still a slapper. She's back in the box, so it looks like she has the potential to do both. But it looks like she's going to stand in and hit. That's kind of typical in softball if you're the second batter yep. and you usually have the ability to slap, but there's no one on base, you might not as often or if it's not as effective. Count two and two here, see if she goes after her on the outside corner like she did earlier. Might already have a trend. <laughs> nice little change up on the inside. That's what's nice about Rogan Tina. She can hit her spots and then when usually she gets two strikes, she's got a nice change up that can throw the batters off. and. I mean, in college pitching, it's good to have a lot of pitches, but Rogantine is a very effective thrower. She'll get the count, she'll get ahead on the batters and throw that change, and it just throws them off just enough. There it is. And there we go. First strikeout of the game for Stacey Rogantine, and out number two in the top of the first. And now we have catcher Christy Belshi. She'll uh, batten from the left side as well. And she'll be playing behind the plate once the Cyclones turn at bat. Another pitch on the outside. One trickles to the back. I, I feel like her her strategy, I guess, heading in this game for Rogatine is to continue to, to hit those outside corners and hopefully bring it in and inside when she gets ahead of the count. Yep. Uh, with that off pitch that you said she's so great with, especially when she is ahead of the count. Mm-hmm. See a rare one get by Sammy Hildreth. Hildreth has come in due to injury, and she's been doing a great job behind the plate. I mean, just lights out. You wouldn't have guessed that that wasn't the starting rotation and the starting uh, battery unit, but the junior has stepped up and done a great job. She also had a great day at the plate on Wednesday, so hopefully she can continue that as well. 
There we go. Nice pitch again. See if you can go ahead and attack her again on the outside. Hopefully bring it to 2-2 two -two and hopefully bring it into the inside mm -hmm. uh, with that off-speed pitch, much like she did uh, against Tomi uh, previously. Look at that off-speed. A little bit earlier in the count and probably threw a little bit off it. That was left a little high for my comfort in the, <laughs> in the strike zone. Well, at least now you know how the blue blue is calling uh, the game today. <laughs> yep. Not a chance for mm -hmm. the third baseman to get to that. Belshi do doing a nice job fighting off the 2-2 two -two pitch. Two outs for the Cyclones. So uh, Ragantine's also doing a great job keeping her pitch count low. In early innings, you want to be efficient, mm -hmm. and especially in a doubleheader, if she does have to come back in later in game two. Uh, you know, softball pitchers can throw unlimited pitches, but it's always good not to overstrain the shoulder. And that one was a little too outside. The curved a little late, and so now we're up to three and two. You mentioned keeping that pitch count low. It would be big for her to get uh, this out right here with this pitch to keep that pinch count low and not have to face another batter early in the game. So we'll mm -hmm. see if she can get that strike out right here. Ball gets passed, round and first. A little bit of a bouncer got away. Must have something gone wrong on the pitch there, but Hildreth did a nice job tracking that down. And so next up we have Leah Hobson. Now Hobson, most dangerous batter. Uh, for the Red Raiders. Her stat line has been getting pretty impressive. Uh, she got her 11th home run of the season against Oklahoma State just last week. Uh, she's got 18 on her career. Uh, just the stat lines for her are just improving every game. So definitely someone to keep an eye on right now. First pitch to Hobson a little high for ball one. The senior is hitting 320 on the year so far. Um, leading the team, actually second in RBIs, leading the team in home runs by far. So definitely a Red Raider bat to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. And that was uh, just by looking at that swing, it looks like she, she really wants nothing more than take that uh, over the fence and get the Texas Tech Red Ra Lady Raiders a early 2 to nothing lead right now. Pitch outside corner. It is a, a ball for ball two. The count moved to two and one with runners on first base. Rogantine sets and delivers. Inside for a strike. Nice pitch. Nice placement down on, or excuse me, inside and low uh, on. Hobson, little, very hard when you go inside on a hitter for them to get that uh, power that Hobson actually has to take it yard, as you mentioned, how many home runs she has so far this season. Throw down a second, and got her. Got her. Nice throw for Hildreth. The Red Raiders are a threat on the base pass, so it's good to start that off early. So with three outs, the Cyclones are up to bat, and we'll be right back. greater than you imagine at the Iowa State University College of Engineering. Welcome back. Now we're moving into the bottom of the first inning and we'll see the Cyclones uh, start things off the bat, hopefully continuing their success they had against Green Bay. And to lead things off is Brittany Gomez. Gomez having a fantastic season at the plate, followed up by Kathleen Bingham, Allie Cappert, two home runs on Wednesday, Lexi Slater, Maddie Reese, Kelsey McFarland, Jordan Spenlove, Nicole Antion, and Sammy Hildreth will round out the lineup. And key to note that a lot of the big hits in the game on Wednesday came from the bottom of that lineup. So top to bottom, Cyclones are hitting great. Now to look at the Texas Tech defense. Starting in left field, we have Susan Welborn, uh, Jordan Bedial in center, and Kiera Miles in the outfield. And then starting at third base, we have Ashley Fultz, Brooke Scott, Leah Hobson, and Brittany Warnicke. Behind the plate is Christy Belshi, and on the mound for the Red Raiders is Kara Custer. So that'll be the Red Raider defense. Custer um, pitching pretty well right now. She's, let's see, 
She's the standard pitcher, the starting pitcher for the Red Raiders. Uh, the senior has a lot of experience on the mound and 107 strikeouts. So something to keep note on. Not the greatest win-loss record, but, you know, win-loss records in softball are hard, you know. Mm -hmm. Big 12, hard league to be in, really, really tough. And the Raiders, though, are on an upswing right now. They've won seven out of their past nine games. That's big, and those were all Big 12 games. They were able to uh, battle both Kansas when they were ranked, uh, in-state rival Texas, and Oklahoma State. So it's not just anyone these Red Raiders are able to beat. And they'll be facing Brittany Gomez. Now, Gomez, as we all know, is just on a great season hitting. She Absolutely. leads leads the Big 12 with 72 base hits this season. Um, she's also, when she gets on the base pass, is a threat. <laughs> I mean, there is top to bottom. For a slapper also to have this high of an average is huge. Slapping is hard to have a super fantastic batting average, but she is definitely uh, breaking the norm with that. So first pitch from Custer to Gomez. Foul tip to the back. Trying to drag bunt, keep those uh, Red Raiders on their toes. Gomez can either bunt it for a hit, slap it for the hit where it like bounces into the ground, or even just bloop it over their heads. And don't forget, she does have one home run this season. So <laughs> what is there that Brittany Gomez Very versatile. cannot Very versatile do? this season, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Pitch on the way. And that'd be fouled to left. Down 0 and 2 to start things. So we'll see what uh, Custer brings next to Gomez. O2 count. Again, chops one off, staying alive. Gomez does a nice job of always getting a bat on the ball. She'll defend it and hopefully get something in play and make them make the errors because that's really the point of a slapper is yep. make the other team make the mistakes, and she really does a nice job exploiting that. Great job continually fouling off pitches that she does not like until she finds the one that she needs. Higher pitch brings a count to one and two, no outs. Top of the lineup for the Cyclones. Let's see if Brittany Gomez can actually continue to work uh, Custer into a higher pitch count uh, early in the game. Another high pitch up high, bringing the count two to two. Brittany seems to be very uh, like calm in the batter's box, which mm -hmm. is something uh, she is very accustomed to. Uh, throughout the season, uh, waiting for the right pitch she wants. And if it's not, she'll foul it off and live to fight another day with the 2-2 pitch on its way. Nice hit ball, unfortunately, right at shortstop Brooke Scott. She was able to pull that in for the first out of the inning for the Red Raiders. That was a hard hit ball. That's almost the worst thing ever is when you have a good hit right at someone. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> they just throw the glove up almost and, and get that catch. But you got to give credit uh, to Scott for getting that catch. It's It's... Obviously, a very almost like the hot corner on third base when they're coming. It's very hard to get get a beat on the ball before it gets to you. So, exactly. Up next, we have Kathleen Bingham, the Ankeny native. There's a lot of Ankeny softball players here today to see her playing. And the first pitch strike fouled off a little bit. Um, Bingham will also be slapping. Uh, always good to start out the lineup with two pretty speedy, smart people on the base pass once they get there. So it's a very effective one-two punch. Another foul off there to bring the count 0 and 2. Bingham must think the corners are sleeping, so both <laughs> Bingham and Gomez yep. tried for that bunt. Let's see what she does here, 0 and 2. I would say for a slap defense, the Red Raiders are playing a little, usually first base, I would pull them normally. You see them afford a little bit more, so must be a strategy that uh, head coach Stacey Meinhart Sessler sees as something that the Cyclones need to make use of. Absolutely. And she continues again, fouls it off. Pitches that you don't want, you just continue to foul off because well, sooner or later you will get the pitch that you want. And when when you do, you know, good hitters will capitalize. We'll see if she does here with the 0-2 delivery. Little, must have been a little, little out of the strike zone, I guess, uh, to bring the count 1 and 2. Look good from up here. but <laughs> Made my heart hurt a little bit. <laughs> 1 and 2 for a pitch count. And the pitch. In that the, one dropped a little low there. So count up now to two and two. One out to Kathleen Bingham. Started off 0 and 2 right away. Works the count back to two and two. A uh, little, little more in her favor, but still uh, almost down in the count right now with this 2 2 pitch on the way. Hits her right in her hand. Dead ball. Yep. 
Like I can hit her right in her, right in her hand. This looks like we're gonna have a consult because if she did complete her swing and the bat did come through the zone, it'll be a strike. strike. Could also be a foul ball that they ruled dead. So we got a lot of, a lot of possibilities here. To come out of this, yes. Yeah. Bingham's gonna stay on first base, hoping that they'll give it to her. So let's look at that again. Oh, off elbow. Yeah. Elbow, and she. I don't think her bat came through the zone, nope. so there stands so. a good chance that she could just have that base and look like somewhere in the elbow forearm region mm -hmm. at first i thought it was her her wrist but we'll see what the umpires are here gonna make the call home plate umpire is john orleski he's talking to our cyclone head coach stacy meinhardt sessler uh, if uh, Bingham does get the base, we'll have Allie Capper and Lexi Slater up next with one out. So let's hope that base runner can stay there, put a couple runners on. And there you see our umpires for today's game. Oh, he's bringing her back to home plate. So I guess a foul ball is going to be the call. Wow. Or dead ball? I don't I don't know what the call was, but it, I mean, it looked very clear as you see on yeah. this replay that it hits her forearm. Oh, it might have hit her bat too. It might have come off of her elbow and hit her bat, and so then it would be dead slash foul ball. Well, no matter what the call is, Bingham is back in there to face Kara Custard with a count of two and two and one out. So hopefully that ball off the elbow won't hurt her too much or affect her swing. And here comes the pitch. Right, right to third base and fired over to first. So uh, f second out of the inning went Fultz to Warnicky. Uh, Red Raiders were able to effectively bring in that slap. It was right up that third baseline, wasn't able to sneak past her. So two outs for the Red Raiders, and we have Allie Cappert. Allie Cappert, you want to talk about <laughs> power, but, you know, she has done a very great job this season of drawing walks, being patient in that box. So we'll see how she attacks uh, Custer. Uh, this at bat, she does draw uh, a ball for ball one, taking the count one and zero. Oh. Capper is a very smart hitter. Mm -hmm. There is very um, good chance that she will either get a hit or get a walk. She is very smart in that batter's box, and yeah, she'll take a couple strikes early on in the pitch, but in the in that bat. But later on, she really can make you pay. And she is a little dinged up. You see that hand there, heavily taped. That is her throwing hand. She got hit by a pitch a couple weeks back. Uh, so, I mean, from Wednesday's game, I wouldn't say it's really affecting her that much. Yeah. <laughs> two home runs, and um, she's sitting at an average right now of 331. So I think she's doing just fine up to that. And the best part of her hitting is she can hit it to anywhere in the field. There is no area that is off limits, and that's a dead ball after it hits, hits off of her leg. Bringing the count two and two. Let's see if she is patient with this and doesn't chase something out of the strike zone. We talk about how patient she is inside of the batter box. We'll see what she does here with this 2-2 delivery. Drop third strike. They're going to try and get her at first. And they do to record the out of the inning. So next up will be continuing Leah Hobson's at bat after a runner got thrown out at second. I am a helpful smile. I'm a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am. I. I am a helpful smile. I've been a helpful smile for 23 years. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am Heidi. On game day, the Cyclones look to score as many points as possible. This time, we're fighting for a zero. We want the number of people in Iowa waiting for a life-saving organ transplant to be zero. Working together, Iowa can be the first state in the nation where no one waits for a transplant. If you don't have a Y next to donor on your driver's license, go to iowadonornetwork.org to help nearly 600 Iowans waiting for their gift of life. I'm Fred Hoiberg, and I'm a registered organ and tissue donor. Welcome back. We're taking a look here at the Cyclone Dugout. Uh, we're moving into the top of the second inning, and we'll have Hobson, Fultz, and Miles up. Uh, if you remember from last inning, uh, that was 
Belshi, who got thrown out yeah, trying yeah. to steal second. So we're going to resume with uh, Hobson's at bat. See how that goes. And like we were saying earlier, Hobson, again, the most dangerous bat for the Red Raiders. And she's also dangerous when she gets on the base. She has 30 stolen bases in her career. So she'll face Stacy Rogantine for the top of the second inning. There you see her stats there, second baseman. Um, just having a good season. High and outside for ball one. For Leah Hobson. If I do remember right, when she, this last inning, when she was at bat, she was actually behind in the count, if I'm not mistaken. So fresh fresh start for uh, Leah Hobson uh, back in the square. High again for ball two. Rogantine does a nice job, though, even though she may get behind in the count. She still uh, still is able to always, you know, get those strikes back, work back in the count. And she's a really tough pitcher, I think. She doesn't throw anything super fancy, but it, it fools those batters. You yeah. don't have to have every curve, every drop ball just be perfect. But she can really still switch up those batters, fool them, and get them back in the count where she likes it. She's showing that composure no matter even going back, you know, down 1-0 or 2-0 on the count. She comes back and throws a great... Uh, pitch for a strike to bring the count back to two and one starting to slowly work it back into her favor a little inside count three one now it will be interesting to see if she actually does uh, go right at her or you know possibly work that outside corner like she did earlier with the first couple of batters that's always the dilemma with a good batter and a three and one count nice pitch nice pitch yep even if it Hobson had chosen to swing at that, it wasn't the nicest strike. So yep. Hobson had one to give. So She did work that outside again. Mm -hmm. Seems like that, that that's her go-to spot almost uh, when she's you know in a bind is to try to paint that outside corner. 3-2, nice pitch for a strikeout. Working all the way back from 2-0 down, she is able to record the strikeout for the first out of the inning. And next up, we have third baseman Ashley Fultz. Uh, Fultz is hitting 325 on the season. Still a good threat, about 30 RBIs. So still threat in the batter's box, six home runs on the season. So, again, there's no really weak spot in any, no. in any Big 12 lineup, but uh, Fultz is definitely part of the heart of that Texas lineup. And she swings on a high, um, almost a rise, and that's what's really key about a softball pitcher and a rise ball is that you're able to throw your rise to look like a strike. And that looked like a beauty. Yeah. And... <laughs> It did not end up you as know, beautiful. For no, no reviewers, you know, they see the end result that it was completely high, but little do they know that it looked probably perfectly down the middle yeah. uh, with that pitch. The um, reaction time with the rise ball, it literally pretty much until it's about, I would say, a foot and a half in front of the plate, it looks pretty dang nice. And then once it's in the glove, you feel like a fool if you <laughs> swung, <laughs> had to take a hack at it. Almost like the curve balls in, in baseball, mm -hmm. you, you feel like a fool swinging at balls in the dirt, but it looks pretty good <laughs> about a foot from you, so. Shows bunt here, takes it back, and takes ball two. Brings the count two in one. Rogantine down 2-0, last, last batter. Battle back to get a strikeout and see what she does here with the count at two and one. You see a lot of batters in softball almost show like they're going to bunt, but I can pretty much guarantee she probably won't bunt. Well, not. It's a lot of a, a timing thing and just tracking the ball through in a quick reaction time because that's really key. A lot of different batters will have a different method about that, but it'll usually bat in the zone and pull back. You saw Capert do that when she was down um, two strikes in the count. So here's a thing to keep an eye on. And we have the 3-1. Got her swinging. There you go. Back up to 3-2 for Stacey Ragantine against Ashley Fultz. One out away in the top of the first inning. Similar position as she was just previously with Leah Hobson, a 3-2. Mm -hmm. uh, did go to that outside corner for the strikeout to she does here. Comes the pitch. Gets her swinging on the outside. Beautiful pitch uh, by Stacy Rogantine for her third strikeout so far uh, of the day. Really nice job effectively using that high pitch. It's coming in, it looks really nice, really nice, and then last second it rises up in the zone. And especially if you can throw a rise ball outside. So even if it does miss, it's just still gonna look Real nice to that right-handed yeah. batter. It'll look like that home run pitch until the last second. And up now for the Red Raiders, we have Kiera Miles, the right fielder. Um, Miles recorded her 100th career hit back in mid-April, so she's on a roll right now. 
Um, she also has a couple triples under her belt, so she's also a speedier with a power hitting bat, so something to keep Ooh. an eye on. Nice cut there for a foul ball. You, you touch on that power she has. That mm -hmm. was a very, very powerful swing to bring the count uh, to one and one. Her swing looks a little different than some of the other uh, Red Raiders we've seen. She definitely works on getting her bat head low and then bringing the ball high. So I feel like her ground outs may not be as common as some others, but it's just a very aggressive low to high swing that'll really give the ball some lift. Again, Rogantine finds herself behind in the count 2-1. Something she's not unfamiliar with so far this game. Little outside, little low. Bring the count three to one. But as you've seen the last two <laughs> batters, she has no problem coming back from a 2-0 count or a 3-1 count. So we'll see. Have no doubt that she's probably <laughs> going to go ahead and, and attack Kira Miles here with this 3-1 delivery. Has it right where she wants them. Spoke too soon. Spoke, <laughs> spoke too soon. The commentator curse as Kira Miles draws a walk and will bring up left fielder Susan Wellburn. Susan Wellborn hitting 262 on the season with four home runs and 17 RBIs. Let's see if she will try to move the runner over. Again, Texas Tank Texas Tech ranks in the top 25 in the nation for stolen bases. Luckily, Sammy Hildreth kind of put a question mark in their mind <laughs> in the first inning by uh, getting, uh, who was that? Belshi. That was Belshi stealing second. So that's a good uh, tone to set for the Cyclones to really say, hey, you can't do that yeah, here. Yeah, you did mention Kier Miles does have some triples on the air, so she does have some speed on the base pad. Nice pitch. Brings the count one and one. Two outs in the top of the second, still scoreless. We'll see if Texas Tech uses uh, Fultz oh, Miles' speed here on the base pass. Sw swung on and missed for strike two, bringing the count one and two. It does not look like Kira Miles <laughs> wants to test uh, that arm of Hildreth from behind home plate. Ryan Dean doing a nice job of getting tough when there's a base runner on. You know, The other batter, she worked it all the way up to three and two, but right now she's taking care of business at one and two. Looked like a drop third, third strike. strike. Yeah, I thought maybe it got a foul tip for a second, but I guess it was a drop third strike. Unfortunate yep. uh, for the Cyclones. She got ahead very quickly at a one-two count as we took take a look at the replay. Yeah, just swung on and missed. Yep, and I think Hildreth was a little probably anxious about the speed of miles on the base and looked away last second, and then that's how the ball kind of shuffles away from you there real quick. So um, a little series of unfortunate events, and mm -hmm. now we'll have Susan Wellburn up to that. Actually, no, excuse me, Brittany Warnicky. That was just Wellburn's on first. Red Raiders are being aggressive up to bat. That's strike one on Wellburn. What you Warnicky. Yeah, <laughs> Warnicky. Me. No problem. What, what you mentioned earlier, she is, you see these runners on the base pads. She is going right at Lady Raiders right off the bat, whereas you see with no runners on, she gets behind in that count 2-0, 3-0, 3-1. And we'll see right now with this 0-1 delivery. Again, must be a little low, a little outside. Bringing the count one and one with two outs, top of the second. That was just a series of unfortunate events for mm -hmm. uh, the Cyclones and, and, and Rogantine. You know, had that strike out there to get out of the inning. Now she has to continue pitching. Again, it was that high pitch that has those Red Raiders swinging. Not on this at bat, but uh, previously. Previously, absolutely. yeah. Bringing the count two and one. Two one, two outs, two runners on. It's gonna drop into right center and one Red Raider will score and will keep the runners stranded at first and third, but a run did cross the plate on the hit to right center by Brittany Warnicky. So the first runs around for the Red Raiders with two outs. So the two outs allowed those base runners to get moving once that hit was. She just got that outside pitch, able to get that into the outfield. Uh, Kelsey McFarland did a nice job hitting the cup, but it was too late to get speedy, speedy Kiara Miles. So we have runners on first and third. And now we have number nine hitter, Brooke Scott, the shortstop that we saw snag a couple nice hits from the Cyclones is up to bat right now. 
runners on the corners. Here comes first pitch. In the dirt, nice stop by Hildreth to keep Brittany Warnicke uh, at first base from advancing to second. Again, it's unfortunately, or unfortunate for the Cyclones. Could have got out of the inning earlier, mm -hmm. but with that drop third strike, not able to throw the runner out at first. The inning continued. Red Raiders capitalized. That's why they're up one nothing in the top of the second. Swung on a miss. Bringing the count one and one. It very, you talked about earlier, keeping that pitch count low mm -hmm. uh, for uh, Rogantin uh, because she will have to come back for the doubleheader possibly later and really needs to attack this batter and get out of the inning early to keep that pitch count somewhat reasonable. Ball, ball two. Scott looked like she's shown a bit of a bunt there. Either to bring on, yep. Yep. Hildreth is now going to make the call with runners at first and third. Everyone needs to be on the same page, especially with as uh, threatening as the Red Raiders are on the base paths. Always got to check. I feel like there could be a steal or a button run coming here from the Red Raiders. Swung on a miss, bringing a count two and two. You know, a first and third situation, it's very hard to do you want to make that throw down mm -hmm. uh, two seconds to try to get that runner and possibly give up, uh, a, a, you know, an inning, or excuse me, an, an earned run uh, in the inning. You know, you see so many trick plays of cutoffs by the pitcher or the shortstop or the second base, so. Nice bit of an off-speed off -speed pitch. Missed, just missed. Three and two now, so runners will be moving on the pitch. Two outs, runners on first and third. The Red Raiders are up one. They scored one this inning. You can bet Rogatin will go after her. Wanting to get out of this inning. There she goes. Nice pitch. Very crucial strikeout for Stacy Rogantine to get her third strikeout uh, of the day. Red Raiders take an early lead. one nothing. We will head to the bottom of the second. Keeping the people in this building comfortable is a top priority for us. And Mid-American Energy can help. 40% of our energy bill was just keeping the lights on. Then we switched to energy efficient lighting and bought new uniforms instead. With new efficient appliances, I'm saving money on my energy and water bills. And the money we save each month moving and drying this grain is easy to handle. Regardless of size, Mid-American Energy can help improve your business's bottom line. The power is in your hands with Mid-American Energy. Our team's goal is to win every game. Every player has a direct impact on that goal. On the highway, the way to win is to set your goal to zero, zero fatalities. Just like basketball, safe driving takes dedication by everyone playing the game. Reaching the goal of zero is simple. Give your full attention to driving, obey the speed limit, don't drink and drive, and buckle up every seat, every time. Zero is the only goal acceptable for me and my family. Shouldn't it be yours? Welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex. We will be heading to the bottom of the second with four, five, and six up for the Cyclones. Slater, Reese, and Spend Love. Texas Tech Lady Raiders were able to get a runner across to play in the top of the second. So first up, we will have uh, the cleanup hitter, Lexi Slater, the shortstop for the Cyclones. Lexi Slater, as you see there, hitting 322 for the season eight home runs, and 40 RBIs. Having a pretty great senior season uh, <laughs> compared to her junior season last year. Yeah, she's definitely collecting a lot of records along her way. She's got career doubles. I mean, she just single season doubles. I think doubles are her thing. So <laughs> let's hope she can continue that. She's uh, up to six in school uh, school history with 182 hits. So. Very impressive. All right, Custer gets the first strike of the inning to bring the count 0-1 to Capper. Later, excuse me. There is the second pitch. First strike, two on Slater. Down early, 0 2 in the count. See what Custer does deliver here on the 0 2 pitch. And high and outside for ball one, bringing the count one and two. Looks like Custer does have a curve um, in her repertoire. Kind of harder to throw that for a strike. In uh, softball, it's not as common a strike pitch, but it's definitely one of those junk ones that looks like a strike. And so then 
We'll see. There's ball two for Lexi Slater, bringing the count two and two. She's doing a nice job, uh, you know, not going after pitches, uh, being down 0-2. It's very easy for a hitter to go chasing down 0-2, feeling like they need to protect every part of the play. But she's doing a great job. Worked the count back two and two and back in her favor. Here comes pitch on the way. Line drive to first base, and that is out number one for the Lady Raiders. Great job there at first base uh, by Warnicky to be able to grab that ball going down uh, the, the foul line. See Slater give Maddie Reese a little heads up on what to expect. Always good from uh, your other hitters to tell you, oh, she's going to throw a curve on this pitch, uh, rise on here. So it's definitely always good to powwow with your hitters. Maddie Reese hits one to third base. Throw over to first and out number two for the inning. Cyclones are being definitely aggressive at the plate, and it's yes. nice to see um, that aggressive confidence that they had um, from the games against Green Bay always carries over. You know, if they're going to throw a first pitch strike, oftentimes it's going to be a pitcher's best strike, so you might as well take it. I'm definitely a big believer at swinging at the first pitch. but Yeah, if it's there, you might as well <laughs> swing on. So here comes Kelsey McFarland up first at the Cyclones with two outs in the bottom of the second. Here comes the first pitch fouled off. McFarland had one of the five home runs on Wednesday. She's got a powerful swing. The thing about her swing is she doesn't always follow through. She's able to get so much power, power. Yep. without always completing her swing. So it's going to be really cool to see um, as you know that really she's a freshman. You yeah. know, As the next four years, three years progress, it's going to be really cool to see that swing get even better and I think she can start going after some hitting records as she goes along. Kara Custer Thrown pitch for ball number one of the inning, bringing the count one and one for Kelsey McFarlane. She has definitely made the adjustment as a freshman quite impressively. You know, it's a hard jump to make, and no matter what, no matter what sport in, in yeah. collegiate sports, making a jump from high school to college, it's one thing to make the jump, but to make it right away, right out of the gate, your freshman year without a retro is is very impressive, no matter what sport you play. And you know. She's doing a nice job filling in the bottom part of this lineup, making a threat, and then also in right field. You know, you know when you're younger and playing softball, right field's a yeah. punishment spot. But <laughs> all but yep. Here in swung college. on, taken deep to center field, but she has a beat on it. Betty all grabs out number three for the Red Raiders as we will head to the top of the third after the break. Lady Raiders up one nothing. The Iowa Farm Bureau and Iowa State Athletics congratulate Jordan Spendlove, a 2014-15 FarmStrong squad member. Jordan displays the exemplary FarmStrong character, perseverance, and work ethic of Iowa's farmers, those individuals who don't have an ounce of quit in them, those who are FarmStrong. Spendlove has exceptional morals and character, is a tireless worker, and goes above and beyond in everything she does. The Iowa Farm Bureau and Iowa State Athletics salute FarmStrong squad member Jordan Spendlove. Anyone can get service in town, but U.S. Cellular offers 4G LTE where you just wouldn't expect it. So you can watch your shows. Way out here! Stream your music. Way, way, way out here! Or check Facebook. Way, 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 out here. Pretty awesome, huh? With U.S. Cellular, now the middle of nowhere is the middle of anywhere. Welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex as we will pick up play on the top of the third with the top of the order for the Lady Raiders with Betty All, Tomy, and Belshi for the first three batters of the inning. Turn out to be, looks like the rain's going to hold off a little bit, hopefully. Maybe the Cyclones will be able to squeeze in the doubleheader from the game that got postponed from last evening, yesterday. And they'll have a game again against the Red Raiders on Sunday at noon, so... I know I'll be back for that. Will we have Mitch in here with me? Uh, you will have Mitch. You will have the relief pitcher, Mitch <laughs> Gerber, come in. <laughs> well, again, Rogantine's in the circle. See your stats there. So far, a pretty effective game. You know, only one hit. It was just kind of a series of unfortunate events that really led to the one uh, Red Raider run. So, First pitch for Rogantine. Strike one. Betty all's last at bat. She did fly out to left field. Hoping for a different result this time around. Here comes the pitch. Ball one. She was able to hold off on that high pitch. I think as long as Ragantine keeps those Red Raiders swinging at that kind of high 
rise kind of deal, mm-hmm. I think she'll be in good shape. But they learned to hold off that. She's going to have to go back into her bag of tricks. Pitch a little outside, bringing the count two and one. Again, we touched on it earlier. Rogan, or excuse me, Rogantin, uh, with nobody on base, she she seems to get behind in the count, not really uh, necessarily attacking the hitters uh, with runners on. Here comes another pitch, third base, thrown over the first and out number one of the inning. Nice snag by Antion to make the throw over to Spenlove. Antion's hand did get a little dinged up in the games on Wednesday, so it's good to see that that will not affect her. So nice job bringing that high pitch, collecting herself, and making an effective throw because, you know, Betty All is speedy, so she was able to get it across the diamond nice and quick. Up next for the Lady Raiders is Devin Tomey. Last time out, she did go down swinging. Rogantine hoping for a similar result again this time. First pitch, little outside, bringing the count to 1-0. and oh, Top of the third. Red, Red Raiders, excuse me, up one nothing with one out in the inning. Uh, Tomi was named the Big 12 Player of the Week. She did have a really um, effective game against the uh, Longhorns of the University of Texas. So she was able to drag in those honors. She had a pair of home runs and five RBIs in that series. So Very good series for the Red <laughs> Raiders. A lot of momentum coming in, taking, uh, you know, after losing that first one to Texas, a close one, three and four, coming back winning four, zero, and seven to three, bringing momentum here into Ames. Pitch outside again. Again, Rogantine getting behind uh, on batters with nobody on base, something uh, that has she's been struggling with uh, for the early part of this first game. See what she does here with the 3-0 count. So wind up in the pitch and strike one. Tommy took a step to first base and the umpire says, no, you're going to stick around for at <laughs> least one more pitch. 3-1 count, Rogantine hopefully trying to battle back like she has much uh, when she gets behind in the count earlier uh, in this inning, or excuse me, in this game. Here comes the pitch, and she will take her base. Devin Tomey is awarded first base with the walk, bringing up Christy Belshi, who drew a walk earlier uh, in the first inning against uh, Stacy Rogantine. She was the one cut down trying to steal second by Sammy Hildreth. So we'll see if they go for, um, with one out, they could do bunt here, or they got they still have speed on the base pass. So it'll be interesting to see what strategy they take, especially with a lefty in the batter's box. Nice pitch on the outside for strike number one in the inning, 0-1 count. Rogantine will try and strike the batters out. She just goes about it a little bit differently when there's a base runner on. When there's a base runner on, she goes <laughs> right at him. But when she's trying to strike him out with no one on, she has a few more pitches to give then, which is always very smart. Here comes the pitch, and same place again. Taking the count early into the commanding 0-2 uh, advantage against uh, Chrissy Belshi. Something she wants to get right here is the strikeout, bringing it to two outs, hopefully, with a runner on first. Here comes the pitch, little high. Bringing the count one and two with Devin Tomey on first. The Lady Raiders up one nothing, top of the third with one out. Comes wind up in the pitch. Driven to right field. Oh, she has a beat on it. And four out number two. Nice catch by McFarland out uh, in right field. What you called earlier, Vermont, as the punishment position. <laughs> when you're young, I just remember yes. getting sent out to right field, and you know you weren't playing well if you're out yep. in right field. But, you know, with left-handed batters, there, there's a lot of left-handed batters in softball, and if they're going to give an off-speed pitch, it's going to come right mm-hmm. to you. And she did a nice job tracking that down. It was over her shoulder and had a little bit of float on it, and she read it quite nicely. And that is strike number one for Leah Hobson. Or, excuse me, yes, Leah Hobson. Mm-hmm. Uh, who did go down on strikes uh, in the first inning against uh, Stacy Rogantine. Shows bunt, pulls back. She does lay down the bunt. Rogantine gets to it and safe at first. A little late by Stacy Rogantine getting to that ball, which will put two Lady Raiders on with Ashley Fultz coming up to bat. Here's the bunt. Kind of rolled for a little bit. Rogantine had to work her way to it. Oh, 
nice and close. Probably a little bit more of a stretch by Spendlove. Could have sold that a little bit better, but, you know, tough situations. Better to catch it than to uh, sell the out, you know. It's not an easy throw from pitchers with a runner right there. So you did a nice job maintaining errors and with two outs and two runners on. Not too threatening of a situation right now. Red Raiders were able to capitalize earlier in the game, but I think Cyclones have definitely buckled down, want to minimize any potential errors or just any just lapses. Here comes the pitch to Ashley Fultz. Swung on deep to left field, but Bingham has a beat on it. Four out number three. The Cyclones escape runners in scoring position in the, in the top of the third. We will move to the bottom of the third with the bottom half of the lineup for the Cyclones. Hey, check it out. Uh, DSL. It's so cheap. Like it? Now people will switch back. Well, Mediacom is still up to 10 times faster. Yeah. And pretty much necessary for homes with lots of devices. Well, yeah. And the recent FCC report said that Mediacom delivered on its 15 meg speeds, and DSL didn't. So, really? DSL is overpriced. Yeah. The fact is, with faster proven speeds, more people switch to Mediacom for the real deal. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation. Making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back again to the Cyclone Sports Complex as we will be heading into the bottom of the third with the bottom half of the lineup due up for the Lady Cyclones, Ben Love, McFarland, and Antion to bring up the bottom of the third. But first, we will have Jordan Spend Love up to bat for her first at bat of the day. Cyclones have gone three up, three down. Pretty aggressive, though, you know. Um, Absolutely. One strikeout, but the rest have been uh, aggressive hits. Unfortunately, right at the Red Raiders. So Custer hasn't had to work too hard on trying to strike those Cyclones out. She's just let her defense do a lot of work, which is what you need as a pitcher. But up we have Antion, who is now hitting 261. Spend yeah, left. Spend left, excuse me. Jumping ahead of batter. <laughs> but she's also hitting 261. So <laughs> I was. In the end, it works out. <laughs> First pitch for a ball, bringing the count 1 0. Second delivery by Custer. Looked good, but ball number two for Custer, bringing the count two to nothing against Jordan Spenlove. Comes the windup pitch and called strike on the outside on Jordan Spenlove, bringing the account to two and one for the first baseman of the Lady Cyclones. One of the seniors on this team. She's really been an effective in her senior season. Ooh, takes one down the right field line. Just past the outstretched arms of the first baseman for the first hit for the Cyclones of the evening. That was a hard hit ball. She really turned and cranked right up the line. She was she was all over that pitch. And uh, first baseman uh, Brittany Warnicke made kind of a diving catch, but was uh, attempt at it, but was not able to get there in time. So one base runner on for the Cyclones. See what the Cyclones do. First base runner on for the evening. Let's see what they do here with Nicole Antion up to bat. Puts down the bunt. Really nice bunt. Nice he plays safe at second. Nice bunt by Antion. Little late on the throw to try to throw out Jordan Spenlove there at second. Now the Lady Cyclones will have runners on first and second with no outs in the bottom of the third, trailing one to nothing. You know, with the bunt up around shortstop, uh, you know, I was set up nicely for her to throw. She was just a little off balance, and throw wasn't really great. Nice, like, snow cone kind of catch there at <laughs> yeah. second base. Keep it from going in the outfield. So now Cyclones have two base runners on, no outs, and Sammy Hildreth up. Hildreth, again, one of four Cyclones to home run on Wednesday. So she, again, the bottom of the lineup has really come alive here in these last couple of games, and that's key, like, top to bottom, there's no really weak spot. And then once you get Sammy Hildreth, then you get Gomez and Bingham and Capert and back to that heart of that Cyclone lineup. So mm -hmm. 
Cyclones are in really good shape to score some runs. Just hopefully they don't strand any runners, which has been a bit of a problem earlier on in the season. Comes first pitch to Hilger. She puts a bunt, and it is fouled off. Trying to chop it up the line a little bit. It'll be crucial for Hildreth to, you know, hopefully do something with this, you know, ball. But you're seeing the bottom of the lineup actually doing something uh, to start the offense for the Lady Cyclones, which would be great because top of the lineup, Brittany Gomez, best batting average on the team, which would be great for the Cyclones. Puts another bunt, just foul down the first baseline. Going to bring the count 0-2 with runners still on first and second. She's really kind of punching at it, which I don't think is really helping her. It's really important to just let the ball come to you. If she's trying to bunt for a hit, then maybe square around later. But mm -hmm. the punching at it really doesn't isn't as effective, in my opinion. Yeah. But luckily, she's a good enough hitter that even down 0-2, she's still a good threat. Shows bunt and swing on and foul tipped. Staying alive here with the uh, well, excuse me with the count still 0-2. Did show button pull back, see if she does square around, which she does. See if she does pull back on this pitch. Hands are low enough on the bat. Yep. I'm probably assuming she's not. Yep. Pulls back, swung on, slow roller to shortstop, and she cannot come up with it as all runners are safe. Bases loaded with no outs. Bottom of the third, Cyclones down 0 to 1 with the top of the lineup coming and the best hitter the Cyclones have. Batting average wise, Brittany Gomez coming up to bat. There it she is. Just a slow roller. Took her eyes. It. Yep. Yep. Just pulled her eyes off of it, and Hildreth is fast enough and was able to get there, and that was quite effective. And head coach Adrienne Gregory, first season out there to talk to her team, make sure everything's okay, and the bases are loaded. This is really key time for Gomez just to disrupt the offense. And, you know, sometimes you don't always want a slapper up when you have a lot of base runners on because, you know, they're going to, it's going to be like a 1 3 or they're going to mm -hmm. try and get them at home, but. Luckily, I think we have enough speed on the bases, and Gomez can get it out of the infield. Some yep. slappers must bunt or just keep it in the infield, but Gomez can take it out of there. So uh, we're in good shape still. You did mention she can't take it out. You did mention earlier she does have one home run on the season, so she <laughs> is capable. You never know. <laughs> she is capable. All right, here we go. Bases loaded for the Cyclones. No outs, bottom of the third. Top of lineup for the Cyclones in Brittany Gomez. Comes the windup in the pitch. She takes ball one. They did record that uh, as a hit by Hildreth. They, they did? Yep. All right. Here comes Brittany Gomez with the 1-0 delivery. She takes it deep. It might be. It could be. It is a grand slam for Brittany Gomez. Her second home run of the season to give the Lady Cyclones a 4 to nothing lead here in the bottom of the third. We mentioned she does have that power. She did have one home run on the season. Gets that grand slam right there. Oh, that was that was beautiful. That pitch just got left over the plate. Look at that. Oh, right in that power. She finished perfectly. So you're short to the zone and then the long swing. So even though she may be small, she really can pack a punch right over that center field fence. No better time to get your second home run than a grand slam while you're down by one. So bases are clear no outs and we've got Bingham up so Cyclones definitely can ride this momentum and whew, that was a beaut that was a beaut <laughs> gonna be tough to follow for Bingham with nobody on for her she does take strike one for her second at bat of the evening she did uh, excuse me ground out to third base earlier uh, in her first at bat hoping for uh, a different result the second time around here comes the pitch and strike two on the outside as she takes the 0-2 deficit down, or excuse me, takes uh, the 0-2 count. Custer doing a nice job not letting one mistake turn into two. You know, that was mm -hmm. an unfortunate enough pitch that Gomez jumped on, but she's going to come back. And, and there it is, strike three for Bingham. That is Custer's first strikeout uh, of the day, giving the Cyclones... Uh, bringing up actually Allie Capper with one out in the third. That was that was great. Great uh, to nasty. You know, you just gave Custer. up. You just gave up a home run. Excuse me, not even just a home run, a grand slam. That's big as a pitcher to have that mental toughness to come back. And that was a very efficient three strikes, and you're done. So um, nice job by Custer to really hold Keep strong. Keep that composure. Yeah, absolutely. And you see that first pitch swung on by Allie Capper. Uh, for a foul ball, she is after after that grand slam. These last her first four pitches after that grand slam, she has been 
going after uh, these Lady Cyclones. Here comes pitch number two and just, oh, actually just clipped the outside for strike number two on Ali Copper, who will be down 0-2 uh, in the bottom of the third with one out. Custer has a nice routine. She throws her pitch, walks out of the circle, comes back, and buckles down, and is ready to throw another strike. So I am... She's dialed in after <laughs> that, that grand slam. You know, it's very easy to lose your composure. Mm -hmm. It's one thing, like you said, to, to give up a home run. It's another to give up a grand slam. It, it's it's almost like that home run ball you give up in football, that, that long bomb for a touchdown. But she's keeping her composure. We'll see what she does here, 0-2. Capper swung on to first base. She gathers the ball and touches first base on her own for out number two of the inning. Next up, we will have... Lexi Slater, the cleanup batter uh, for the Cyclones. Hit right to first base, last at bat. She also, again, another dangerous Cyclone bat, but if Custer keeps it dialed in like she is right now, it's going to be tough for the Cyclones. Luckily, Ooh. Gomez helped her out. First pitch, high. So that would be the first ball since the home run. Yeah, that was not a strike, <laughs> actually. So uh, look like possibly might have got away from her, but... She just looks very dialed in after that grand slam, which is something you don't see very often. Second pitch a little high. Bringing the count 2-0. Oh. We talked about pitch count earlier for Rogantine, wanting to keep it low. It looks like Custer, you know, with that grand slam, her pitch count, is, at least in the third inning, is starting to go up, but she looks like she's trying to get her way out of it here with a strike. Taking the count 2-1. Still, still a hitter's... Hitters count at 2-1 for Lexi Slater. Here comes the windup and the pitch. And swung on, fouled off uh, to the right side. Custer has been leaving it a little high, which I guess if I was a pitcher, I would want to miss a little lower. A little lower, yeah, absolutely. With these Cyclones. But, I mean, if she keeps missing high and the Cyclones can make her pay for it, that'll be key. But if she keeps continuing throwing effectively like she has been, then yeah. things get a little – it's going to be a duel, so – We'll have to see how this plays out. Here comes a 2-2 delivery. Lexi Slater swung on deep to left field. It is gone. A home run for Lexi Slater. Second home run of the inning for the Cyclones to give the Cyclones a 5-1 lead here in the bottom of the third. Very nice home run by Lexi Slater. And so your second home run of the week, too. So, again, this pitch is a little lower, you know, Inside though, and you can just when that pitch comes inside and you read it, you bring it bat head, you see your bat head low, finishes high and just woo. That no, was that no was doubt. great. Very hard, very hard to, you know, turn uh, on an inside low pitch, but she did a great job of uh, bringing those hips around and just exploding uh, for that home run. Second home run, like I said, uh, of the inning for the Cyclones. Someone lucky duck out there got the home run ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next is Maddie Reese for the cycle and she did take the first pitch for a strike here comes the 0-1 delivery yeah, in the dirt nice stop by Belshi behind home plate I know it's being a former catcher those balls in the dirt they don't always do what you expect them to do <laughs> unfortunately but great stop by her when or whether there is or is not runners on base it's always great to not let a ball get past you kind of gets to your head a little bit oh chopped up the middle Grab by second base and out number two for the inning. Or excuse me, out number three. three. Yep. All right. The Cyclones were able to grab two home runs in the bottom of the third to take a 5-1 lead, including Brittany Gomez's grand slam. We will be heading to the top of the fourth with the Lady Raiders after the break. Four-wheel steering is why I get up in the morning. The only thing better than the smell of fresh cut grass is the smell of perfectly level fresh cut grass. That yellow seat's my favorite chair. You want to find a John Deere dealer? Just set your GPS to Tractor Experts. When my grandson grows up, it's his, but it's all mine now. That's how we run, and nothing runs like a deer. Van Wall is proud to be your dealer of choice. Find a location online at vanwall.com. I am a helpful smile. I'm a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am. I. I am a helpful smile. I've been a helpful smile for 23 years. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I 
I am a helpful smile. I am High V. Welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex as we will be heading to the top of the fourth. A little size having a little fun <laughs> with the students, or excuse me, with uh, the fans here at the Cyclone Sports Complex. Got some of the Ankeny uh, softball. softball. Yep. yep. Able to watch uh, their uh, Allie Cappert and Kathleen Bingham, both Ankeny natives here playing for the Cyclones. So fun to have them out here. I know it was fun when I was young to come up <laughs> to softball games. It's always fun to watch, um, you know, where, you know, you, you might want to be, you know, as, as a, when I was, uh, I always like to go to high school games in high school. I always like to go to college world series and kind of see uh, what it's like at the next level. Yep. Oh, nice pitch there by Stacy Rogantine, uh, for strike one of the fourth inning as up, up next, we have Kira miles, uh, for the lady Raiders. Actually, that was a ball one. Excuse me. Missed a little high, a little high. Oh, swung on, taken into the gap, right? Brittany Gomez gathers it. And a little late throw to second base is Kira Miles. You talk about her speed reaches uh, on a double. She's got great speed, going to make the Cyclones pay, and she did it earlier uh, in the game. She was right. the one who was able to get around all the way around the bases for the Red Raiders. And we have a pinch runner uh, for the Lady Raiders. Or no, excuse me, she's just delivering. Elbow guard. The elbow guard. It seems like they always take more time to deliver, you know, equipment that they wear hitting <laughs> than playing. All right, up next we have Susan Wellborn uh, for the Lady Raiders with a runner on second. Shows bump, pulls back, and takes ball one high. Let's see if Stacy, we talked about it with runners on. She does like to attack hitters more than if there isn't runners on. Mm -hmm. Down on one earlier, see what she does with this delivery. Swung on, taking a short stop, thrown over to first, in time for the out. Great throw by Lexi Slater over to spend love for out number one uh, of the inning, and also not allowing Kira Miles to advance to third base. Yep, it kind of bobbles in her glove, but she did a nice job keeping down on it, gathering it, making that good throw, and you know that indecision kept Miles at second, which is very key. So we have one out. And Brittany Warnicke up. She had the base hit in the, in the uh, previous inning, excuse me, second inning to get the Red Raiders on the board. And ball one is very low, close into the dirt for the first pitch for Brittany Warnicke's at bat. Still runner on second with one out. Top of the fourth, Cyclones do lead five to one. Shows bunt. Pulls back and takes ball two. Looks like Ryan Teen's trying to make those Red Raiders swing at that rise ball, but they're holding off because those look a little high to start with. So They were swinging earlier now, yeah. making the adjustment uh, from earlier, which is something you like to see your players do. Swung on foul off, bringing the count 2-1 to one, uh, in favor of Ryan Teen. Foul ball was straight back, so her timing is right on. So we'll see if... Uh, Ragantine comes with a changeup or something a little different because that timing was pretty much perfect other than being below the ball. Good thing we got some glass in between us <laughs> and a net as well. And look, there we go. There was a changeup for strike two. There you go, bringing the count two and two. This could be uh, this could be big for you know the Lady Raiders. You know after giving up five runs in that uh, bottom of the third to try to you know capitalize and you know respond with a couple runs on their own, and they do have a runner in scoring position. 2-2 delivery, fouled off again. Again, Warnicke's timing is right on with uh, Ragantine. So, again, I think Ragantine will probably try for maybe a rise or maybe a change just to get her timing off just a little bit. And here comes the windup. Pulls back and swung on again, fouled off for the sixth pitch at the at-bat. I believe so. Yep. I mean, the, still, the count is two and two. I tell you what, Brittany Warnicke, she is going to make Rogantine earn this out if she does get her out. Here comes the windup and the seventh pitch of this at bat. Taken down the left field line for a foul ball. That was a that was a rocket 
Yep, definitely saw that change coming. That was a little more off speed and definitely cranked around <laughs> on that. That's, what that. that's why they call the third base one of the hot corners. <laughs> Woo! Hot corners are very dangerous in baseball and softball. So, all right, here will come the eighth pitch of the at bat uh, against Brittany Warnicky. 2 2 delivery and fouled off again. Again, like I said, she is making Rogantine earn this out if she does get Warnicky for the second out of the inning. Here comes yet again the 2 2 delivery. Oh. Ooh. Crowd here is not happy with that. That missed just inside. Uh, Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> it got, it got Stacy Gmeinhardt Sessler up off her bucket. Here's a replay of it. Oh, Warnicky very, almost went for it, too. So Very close, very close. Bringing full count, 3-2 with one out. Swung on deep to left field and just on the other side of the fence for Bingham. Bingham did a nice job tracking that down. Uh, Miles was on second base, ready to tag if that was necessary. But I mean, I lost count. This I think <laughs> this might be the 12th pitch uh, if, of this at bat. Again, good for Brittany Warnicky making ragged team work for it. For the Cyclones, not good. This pitch count keeps getting higher and higher early in this game. And foul tip. Man. She she will not go down without a fight, which is something you like to see uh, out of your batter. But if you're a Cyclone fan, uh, you're not liking this uh, at all. I mean, I think it's a fun at bat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and now we, we're going to have a little bit of consultation with uh, pitching coach for the Cyclones. Just going to take a moment, focus in. Always different conversations here, nothing... Nothing bad. Always oh, just uh, let's gather this. Let's get this done. Let's get mm -hmm. out of this inning kind of discussion. There you see Rogantine's stats for the game so far. She'd have she's got five out five strikeouts, which is good. And behind her, you also see the Texas Tech uh, bullpen is also looks like they're warming up a little bit. So the umpteenth millionth pitch of this <laughs> bat. Hopefully the final one. Three two delivery. And, and <laughs> fouled off again. You know. At least in my opinion, I, I think of that pitching uh, visit as, as a way to hopefully to kind of throw off that mo or not necessarily the momentum, but uh, yep. to throw off the hit of Brittany Warnick. Kind of almost the ice the kicker mentality, but again, she fouls it off for the umpteenth millionth <laughs> plus one pitch of this at bat. 3 2 delivery. Oh. Fouled off again. I think the Cyclones might be running out of softballs. We don't know yet. And we got Spend Love coming in here. Got this. <laughs> I mean, as, as a pitcher, you you don't want to let this batter go. You've worked no. hard. You've you've devoted uh, a lot of pitches, and it, you'd hate to see her take first base, and which she will. Great job, actually, by Brittany Warnicky to continuously fight off pitches that just weren't for her, yep. and she was able to draw the walk. Great for the Red Raiders. Bad for the Cyclones, as the Red Raiders will send up. Brooke Scott with runners on first and second with run one out here in the top of the fourth. Looks like we might be doing a pinch hitter. Yep, we've got number seven for the Red Raiders. That is Brittany Lee. She's a sophomore out of Keller, Texas. So she'll be pinch hitting for Brooke Scott. Let's see if we can go through our stat book. Oh, yep, there, <laughs> there, there are you our go. stats. How convenient. Thank you, Cyclone.tv. <laughs> We got 13 RBIs and three home runs. So um, definitely going to be a quick change here. Very similar stats to um, Brooke Scott, but a couple more home runs. So hopefully getting someone in there. You know, Scott may just be in a slump right now. It happens. Softball games of ups and downs. So Absolutely. Here comes the first pitch. Throws down a bunt. In no throw, yep, dead ball. It did look like it did hit off of Brittany Lee's. Uh, I don't know if it was her left foot or right foot, but it looked like it, it nicked her after it touched the ground. So dead ball. Here's that replay. That was a nice bunt. That Absolutely. just died. It might have been a help of her. Yep. Left she was, shin. The question is, looks like she was still in the box. So then that means it's just a dead ball. If she had been out of the box, 
or even if it hit her bat while I was out of the box, that would have been. Which was very close to her oh, bat so close. as well. <laughs> so she will take the square again. Down 0-1 the count. Squares around, pulls back. Swung on right up the middle. Brittany Gomez fields it. The throw home, not in time. Throw it over to third. Got her. S crazy events <laughs> there as Gomez almost got the out uh, at home, but Hildreth, very smart to get that runner at third. Shot right up the middle, right at Ragantine's feet. Gomez does a nice job charging it. All the way home, just a little late. It was nice going in high because it looked pretty close. Then Hildreth heads up throw over to Antion. Antion at third. Antion lays down a tag, knocks off a helmet, and gets an out. So despite one runner scoring, Cyclones still have a 5-2 lead with two outs and a runner um, – that was Lee, did make it all the way to second in that series of events. All right. Going back to the top of the inning, or excuse me, top of the order with Jordan Betty all for the Lady Raiders. Slaps on foul. That was great for the Red Raiders after giving up five runs in that bottom of third to at least respond with a run of their own mm -hmm. in the top of the fourth. Still a possibility to do some damage with a runner in scoring position at second. Two outs and Jordan Betty all facing uh, an 0-2 count right now. Red Raiders have been doing a nice job of making the most of their bats and their hits and their runners. You know, they're effective. If they get on the bases, they'll make the most of what they're given. It's it's not the prettiest or most classic game, yep. but it is very uh, still a threatening one that really, you know, the Cyclones haven't, it kind of is putting them almost out of rhythm because these plays are not anything spectacular. These hits are not anything spectacular, but they're just forcing them to make the routine plays at their best, which is really hard on a defense, so... Uh, good work by the Red Raiders. And second pitch against Betty All is a little high. Bringing the count to one and two. It will be nice uh, for Rogantine to hopefully get this third out uh, to prevent any other runs uh, coming across play in the top of the fourth. Comes another pitch. Now, little outside, bringing the count two and two. Now Betty All does rank third in the Big 12 with 63 hits this year. That trails Brittany Gomez and then Shelby Davis of Oklahoma State. So she also is a threat too. Uh, just trailing our good old Brittany Gomez out there <laughs> in center field. And ball high four, ball number three, the third consecutive ball going from an 0-2 count to a 3-2 count. Here will come the payoff pitch. Runner will be going uh, on second with this pitch. See what Rockin' Team does. She's been high. She's been outside. Here comes the pitch. Right to Lexi Slater. Over to Spin Love for the third out. The Cyclones escape, only giving up one run in the top of the second. We will head to the bottom of the fourth. Education is the key to solving issues for the future. Ten universities are committed to making dynamic change in STEM and research. At Iowa State University, plant scientists and engineers are designing crops that tolerate climate change, produce bigger yields, and feed more people. Working together to develop smart plants, Iowa State researchers are discovering new science to help meet one of the world's greatest challenges, a plentiful, safe, nutritious food supply. Big 12, making a difference. Keeping the people in this building comfortable is a top priority for us. And MidAmerican Energy can help. 40% of our energy bill was just keeping the lights on. Then we switched to energy efficient lighting and bought new uniforms instead. With new efficient appliances, I'm saving money on my energy and water bills. And the money we save each month moving and drying this grain is easy to handle. Regardless of size, MidAmerican Energy can help improve your business's bottom line. The power is in your hands with MidAmerican Energy. All right, welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex as we will move to the bottom of the fourth, and we will basically pick up right where we left off, uh, actually in the bottom of the third, as we will lead off again with McFarland, Antion, and Hilder, hoping to repeat uh, some similarities uh, uh, from the previous inning to get this Cyclone offense clicking again. It seems like you talked about it on Wednesday, you talked about it uh, with Wednesday that it was the bottom of the lineup that really got the Cyclones going and produced some runs and very similar results here. The big hits came from the top of the lineup, but the bottom of the lineup did their job, got, got on, on base. base. You know, the 
top of the lineup can't be as effective if the bottom of the lineup isn't doing what they're supposed to. And, you know, that's it's really nice to see all the Cyclones in the hitting lineup and in the field. They've been doing great top to bottom. Everyone is executing their job. And in the field, the errors have come from Texas Tech exploiting a couple things. But overall, it's just been a very thorough performance by both teams. Cyclones just happen to have the big hits where Texas Tech has not. All right, that pitch is swung on and fouled off. That will take Jordan Spinlove to an 0-2 count here in the bottom of the fourth with zero outs in the inning. Cyclones up 5-2. to two. Now, last time, Jordan Spinlove was able to get on base with a single cell, looking for at least something similar to that or more. Here comes the 0-2 delivery, and kind of, kind of got her bundled up, I guess, uh, as far as with her hands. Uh, as, uh, or excuse me, Kelsey McFarland uh, goes down uh, on strikes. Now we can go to Jordan Spenlove. <laughs> she had a hit to start off that last inning when things got rolling up the first baseline. Looks like a drop ball went a little rogue. She's been having some issues with that. If you notice, it's almost, I guess, a drop or a change because she's coming in with Knuckles up, up, and that's yep. hard to throw with a lot of velocity and really hard to place. Um, that back foot keeps popping up on that pitch, too, which is interesting to see. And she's got a beat on it and makes the catch by the cycle and dug out for out number two. Jordan Spinlove flies out to essentially the third base for a nice play over by the dugout. It's very hard to make a play in foul territory, especially with the dugout right there. So Exactly, and uh, Fultz did have to reach across her body, you know, being a righty playing along the third base line. She had to... Cut across there, did a nice job tracking that. So now we have Nicole Antion, third baseman up. First pitch swung on. Bit and of a slow bouncer, able to get that on the run for the final out. All right, that was a quick three up and three down for the Cyclones as Custer made quick work of the Cyclones. We will head to the top of the fifth after the break. Cyhawk series. It's more than a game. It's Cyclones and Hawkeyes in nine thrilling athletic showdowns. It's student athletes in the classroom and on the court. It's stadiums in the spotlight and the fields that make our state great. Welcome to the Iowa Corn Cyhawk series. It's more than a game. Track the tradition. Visit iowacornsyhawkseries.com. Welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex. I'm pretty uh, sure that glove is as big as that. I think it's almost, it's Probably. at least twice the size of his head. <laughs> well, but start him young, right? Exactly. Start him young. <laughs> Look like a first baseman's glove or, or a catcher's glove. Couldn't tell. But we will begin the top of the fifth with the 2 3 4 lineup for the Lady Raiders with Devin Tomey up to lead for the Lady Raiders here in the top of the fifth. Again, Everyone's showing some love to Cy. Just yeah. got to throw that out there. Good old, good to have Cy here rocking his softball shirt. And we got a good crowd out, you know. Absolutely. It's starting to look a little gloomy, but so Hopefully far, it holds off. No rain. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, we're all doing our anti-rain dance. <laughs> I'd like to see tar boxes the most. That'd yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So Stacey Rogantine is facing Devin Tomey. Uh, first pitch misses a little high. Again, Tomey had a great series against uh, Texas. She had, let's see, a pair of home runs, five RBIs. So that is also, that series, again, put the Raiders seven of nine wins in Big 12, all against ranked opponents. So Raid Raiders know how to fight against Big 12 opponents. So Cyclones cannot be complacent here, and it's really important for Ragantine and the Cyclones to keep them off the board because they've, they slowly keep getting one run back each inning. And so mm -hmm. we want to make sure that that just stops. <laughs> yeah, that was very great, especially last inning by Kara Custer for the Raiders after, you know, taking the mound again. 
after giving up five runs in, in an inning to get that three up and three down yep. very quick. Very good for Kerry Custer. Now let's see if Stacey Rogantine can make quick work of the top of the lineup of the Lady Raiders. But she's gotten a little behind down. 3-0 on a count. Here comes the 3-0 delivery. And in for strike one. She now has reached over 100 pitches for the game, which Sarah, I guess. In softball, pitch count, yep. you know, you kind of want to keep it low, but the thing about softball is there's no pitch limits. There's no <laughs> inning limits. There's none of that. Yeah. So a team, in theory, could ride the arm of one pitcher. And if you do ever watch the College World Series, uh, softball College happens. World Series, it happens. They're Washington, Oklahoma, Arizona, Florida, all those teams that you – like annually see in those tournaments will have that one pitcher you know mm -hmm. but it's it is always good to have a second oh, yeah. one uh, a, a good second one in that just in case but and the cyclones have been doing a great job of pitching by committee you know Rogantine, johnson and wildbacher all do a great job they're all a little different so they kind of balance each other out really nicely which keeps um all the teams on their toes so you know even if you don't have that one pitcher to carry you out they're still pitching by committee and the cyclones mm -hmm. have been doing a great job with that and We'll probably see Rogantine through this whole game. Uh, Rogantine does a nice job holding all the way out. You do look over in uh, to the Cyclone bullpen there. And a great strikeout for Rogantine. After being down 3-0 uh, to start this at bat, battles back, gets it to 3-2, and gets that strikeout for out number one of the inning. Oh, well, just underneath it. Again, that outside corner really works well for Rogantine. Rogantine doesn't have... 15 million different types of pitches, but she's a very effective and efficient pitcher. And so she's really fun to watch. And, you know, hitters like to hit against her. She's not going to power it past them, so they do have a chance. And so, like we saw with uh, Warnicky last last inning, you know, it can be a pretty fun duel to see who's yeah. going to come out on top. And <laughs> Absolutely. It was, uh, that was actually strikeout number six for Stacey Rogantine on the day. Now we bring up Christy Belshi, and she takes strike number one of the at-bat, bringing the count to one and one. Top of the fifth, one out. The Cyclones do lead five to two. And you did mention we do see some action in the bullpen. So it will be interesting to see if uh, Stacey Rogantine goes the distance. Here comes pitch and strike number two. And that was Paris Immels you saw warming up. I did leave her off that list. I kind of forgot. But Immels has also go. been, again, pitching by committee, doing a great job. Um, so... It's always good to have kind of a mix of pitchers. You know, each one kind of mm -hmm. has their specialty, and it's it's been really paying off for the Cyclones. And that is fouled off by Christy Belshi as the count still remains one and two. It will be interesting to see if, you know, I, I mentioned Rogantine after giving up that run last inning. Hopefully come in, get a, get a three up, three down, make quick work, and see if she does come out uh, in, in the top of the six. Now, Rogantine... She does a nice job where she doesn't get rattled too easily sometimes, you know, in games against Oklahoma State, against even Iowa and Drake. She might come out, give up a few runs, but she can usually finish it out and do a nice job striking out, usually averaging around, like, in a good game, 10. So she's getting up to those numbers, which always, the closer she gets that magic 10th strikeout, the better the Cyclones fare. And that is taken high by Christy Belshi as Christy Belshi actually worked the count up to 3-2. and two. And we will see if Rogantine can hopefully get her out and not let her advance to first base. Swung on and fouled to left side. Before this game, Rogantine had 86 strikeouts. So that's really good. She has more tonight. She only had four last season. So the improvement that Rogantine has shown is just fantastic. And it's just, I don't know, I think pitching yeah. is pretty tough. And as a senior, the mental toughness she shows in the circle to – you know, give up runs but not let it effectively rattle her uh, is just very impressive. You mentioned uh, that she's not very powerful, so that means, you know, improvement of strikeouts is that placement and that variety of pitches that she provides. That's bloop to left field and foul. But, no, you, you touch on that, you know, the, the drastic strikeout improvement from last year, and you also mentioned that she doesn't have very, you know, high power. She's not going to blast it by you. Thus, her variety of pitches mixing it up in the counts, uh, is really what uh, is what's going to be working for her because, you, like you said, she doesn't have that power. She is up there in speed for the Cyclones, but... Oh, nice catch nice. by Bingham in left field. It was in the gap, and she was able to close that distance and make and lay out for out number two of the inning. Great yeah. catch by yeah. Bingham. The ball kind of looked like it was just going to drop. It wasn't 
the most powerfully hit. You see Belshi didn't finish her swing and just Bingham had a perfect read on it. Mm -hmm. That was great. She had, she knew right away her first step was not back. It was forward. So she knew right off the bat it was going to be in front of her. And luck luckily she did because she needed every step to get that ball. And that is ball number one to Lee, Leah Hobson, uh, the second baseman for the Red Raiders. Hobson one for two on the day. Again, another effective Red Raider hitter. Here comes pitch. Way outside for ball number two. Again, Rogantine, I don't think she doesn't want this inning to go on much longer yep. you know, than it needs to be after giving up that one run last inning. And, you know, Custer making quick work of the Lady Cyclones in the bottom of the fourth. And looks like ball three for Hobson as she will have a very favorable 3-0 count on this next delivery. You know, these three pitches haven't been very close to the strike zone, so it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see if she just takes all the way. And I think she was taken all the way because that was right down the center for a strike to bring the count to three and one. Hobson is right over the plate. It's an interesting move where um, a lot of times you see that some softball players are a little more upright, but you see her, she starts low, she stays with her chest over the plate, and she's not super toast to the line, but her elbows are out over that plate, so she mm -hmm. does make um, ineffective and harder target. You know, it might take away Rogantine's inside pitch. You know, it is college, so you're not as likely to hit him as yep. you were when you're younger, but <laughs> it's still always a little nerve-wracking when you have that body out over the plate. Yeah. Here comes payoff pitch, 3-2. Takes it deep to center field. Brittany Gomez to the warning track, and she gets it for out number three in the fifth as the Cyclones will head to the bottom of the fifth with the lead five to two. Anyone can get service in town, but US Cellular offers 4G LTE where you just wouldn't expect it. So you can watch your shows. Way out here, stream your music. Way, way, way out here. Or check Facebook. Way, 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 out here. Pretty awesome, huh? With U.S. Cellular, now the middle of nowhere is the middle of anywhere. greater than you imagine at the Iowa State University College of Engineering. Welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex as we'll be heading to the bottom of the fifth with Hildreth due up and then the top of the order for the Cyclones with Gomez and Bingham. Bingham and Gomez had a good last inning in the outfield. Let's see if they can turn that around to the batter's box, both keeping the Red Raiders from doing anything too effective and so bottom of the fifth hopefully cyclones can tack on some more runs after that big bottom of the third you know it's, um texas tech has been able to score one in the second one in the fourth and the cyclones were just all in that third inning so hopefully they can use this part of the lineup to make effective work but it looks like custer is back on her uh back on her game <laughs> back on her game just keeping the cyclones from getting those good hits cyclones are reading her nicely they're getting the bat on the ball but they haven't in a while, been those effective out of the infield hits. So, mm -hmm. Custer is throwing them the strike zone, but she's not making them easy strikes. This at bat will be good to see as Gomez made that catch in outfield, had a grand slam last time out. Be interesting to see now that with nobody on base, mm -hmm. she's not really going to hit. She's going to do that drag. So, we'll see what she does after, I guess, dragging and missing for <laughs> strike number one in the bottom of the fifth 0 1 count. It just really shows you how effective and versatile she is. Wow. Woo! Almost took out coach there. I would have probably have been some extra conditioning uh, at next <laughs> practice if she did so, but she will be facing an 0-2 uh, count here in this next delivery. Here we see head coach Stacey Gmeinhardt Sessler. Her Cyclones are above 500 and hope to stay that way with this three-game series versus Texas Tech. There he goes. Blooper, but... Center fielder takes it for out number one of the inning. So, obviously, no way she was going to repeat uh, 
you know, her performance from the last inning with the Grand Slam, but fly out second for the second out of the inning, which will bring up Captain Bingham. Bingham, yep. Left fielder who made that nice diving catch uh, in that previous inning. Hasn't been effective as effective up to bat today, but hoping to look on to capitalize that. And A nice half swing. Hard hit, though. That was... Yeah, absolutely. For out number three of the inning. Again, Custer makes quick work of the Cyclones. Three up, three down, as we will head to the top of the... Or excuse me, the top of the six uh, when we come back. I am a helpful smile. I'm a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am. I. I am a helpful smile. I've been a helpful smile for 23 years. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am high V. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Well, we're back at Cyclone Sports Complex taking a look at Loopy Ball, which is a particular favorite sport of mine to watch. Probably I would not ever want to do that. I mean, I, I you, you haven't experienced it. I, I mean, I haven't either. I think it would be fun, honestly, but uh, you, we talked about it uh, before the game even started. You had someone who had an injury yeah. uh, with this, so it, it is a little scary, <laughs> but I, 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 I would still like to try it out because it looks absolutely fun, and yes, I would be one of those guys that talks to his friend and says all right we're just gonna run full ball at each other and let's see who wins uh yeah we were playing soccer and my friend actually bruised a rib so loopy they are dangerous <laughs> oh good old loopy ball you know <laughs> I, I don't think i'd be able to walk after having to roll out to the outfield <laughs> be very very dizzy all right as you see uh up next will be ashley fultz the third baseman for the lady raiders who is 0 for 2 on the day with a, a strikeout and a fly out uh to the shortstop earlier. Rogatine starts things off with an off-speed pitch. You know. Is that uh, common? It's off ball? I think it can be. You know, it really, I wouldn't mind it. If this is your third time around facing these batters, I wouldn't go right away with that first pitch strike that they've seen. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That off-speed probably throws them off. They're probably, you know, it's your third time around. So you think you know what they're going to do. And so, you know, not a bad move. Not a bad move at not all. Not a bad move, but... Unfortunately, that pitch right there taken for ball number two. So 2-0 two count against Ashley Fultz here in the top of the six. She shows, pulls back, swung on down the third baseline for a hit as it will get past Antion at third base for a leadoff hit for Ashley Fultz. And next up will be Kiara Miles, the right fielder for the Lady Raiders. Miles so far today. Yep, there you see that replay again right up. Antion made a dive for it, but wasn't able to get to it. Bingham able to track it down. And it looks like we will have a pinch runner for the Red Raiders. We'll have Kaylee Strickland, a freshman from Princeton, Texas. So uh, uh, let's see. That was Ashley Fultz. She'll be able to re-enter. You have mm -hmm. two in and outs before you're done for the sub. So uh, it'll also be interesting to see if we get to the bottom of the lineup and we see Brittany Lee in for Brooke Scott again. So that was the pinch hitter we saw yep. earlier. And again, Kira Miles. I think she's been the biggest threat so far this game for um, the Red Raiders. She's fast. She can hit it. She's almost tied the Texas Tech um, triples record. So I think a triple is very hard to hit. You know, yes, it's easy absolutely. to do a double, but it's Ooh, harder. And speaking of hit, she lines one of the gap. And oh, Brittany Gomez just out, outside of her reach. The relay throw in to second is too late. Unfortunately, Brittany Gomez had a beat on that ball just not able to get it, just a step behind as yep. she wasn't able to get the whole glove on it. As you mentioned, how dangerous Kira Miles is. She does get a double Again, for the Lady Raiders. You know, Gomez did an awesome job of tracking that yep. down. Most center fielders, look, it just dies almost just a little bit before she gets there. And good thing McFarland read the backup perfectly. That's another key that McFarland was there for when it came off her glove and was able to be right there and read it instead of being right behind. It was nice work by the outfield. Gomez 
almost had it. And if she did, it would have been a spectacular would have been a great play. play. <laughs> yeah. Would have been a da na 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 na. <laughs> Looks like we have a call. Yep. Stacy making a, a change. It possibly. looks like a possible pitching change. Yeah, no one coming in from the bullpen. Oh, yep. Looks like we're going to have. Um, gonna go with Paris Immels, I believe. I mean, we saw her warming up earlier. Yep. I would believe. Yep, Paris Immels, uh, senior from California, will be making the switch uh, here in the top of the six. Rogantine, great job. You know, she did an effective job at two runs. First, that was her first probably, um, this has been her first inning with the first batter on. So mm -hmm. it's a good time to make a switch where the batters have seen her enough, where her variety of pitches isn't going to be as effective. So um, Rogantine, another great couple of innings. And now we have Paris Immels. So the senior from California will be in here. There you see her stats up there. Um, hasn't pitched as many innings uh, this season so far. Um, but again, going to go in there, get in relief. Just a change of scenery for the Cyclones against these Red Raider batters who have again seen Ragantine. Mm -hmm. And so again, the switch, not too common. A lot of um, Ragantine stat line shows her pitching about six to six and a half innings, and that's pretty common. Immels will come in here, finish out the rest of the game, and just be that change of pace that is needed so that the Red Raiders, who are effective batters, aren't comfortable in the batting box. That's what's key right now, is to make sure that they're sense of comfort and familiarity is a little different. Yeah, and Immels might just be coming in to hopefully just get the Cyclones out of this uh, jam because as you see in the bullpen, there are two more pitchers uh, warming up, which I presume are uh, Katie Johnson and Brianna Wilbacher. So. Yep, Wilbacher and Johnson will make the tandem in the next game. So it's really key for Imholz to be effective here and make the most of these Texas Tech batters. So we do have runners on second and third and no outs. That's a key stat as uh, the Red Raiders set up to bat Susan Wellborn. So Wellborn will face Immels in Immels' first couple pitches of this game. That was a, to go back to Kira Miles, that was her second double of the game. So it was it was good for her to get that hit. But like you mentioned earlier, great time to bring in uh, Paris Immels. And we'll see what she does here with the first pitch delivery to Susan Wellborn. There we see Miles over there at second base. And on first base, we have Ashley Fultz. And first pitch for Immels of the evening is a strike for strike number one of the inning. 0-1 count. Runners on second and third. No outs for the Red Raiders. Hopefully two runners in scoring position. They, they're they hoping to get one. Hopefully two uh, runners across this inning. Their pitch number two, line to Slater. And thrown to first for out number one. You saw that she did check uh, the runner at third to hold her there while she made that throw uh, to first. But great play by Lexi Slater, you know, being slightly in yep. uh, in that infield. Slater does a nice job where if there are runners on, she can usually freeze them. And a key in that is making sure you don't look up too early. Slater always sees it in, makes sure she freezes the runner, and then makes a very effective and composed throw. So um, nice job by Lexi Slater. She's still playing in because there is only one out. As we face Warnicky, who had the world's longest at bat last <laughs> inning. <laughs> Absolutely, and she takes ball one uh, for her at bat. I, it might we might be in for another marathon <laughs> here. I think her at bat has taken longer than uh, probably a combination of some other people's at bats this whole evening. Or so a Cyclones past two innings. Yes, the the, <laughs> the 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 consistent double or three up three down the last two times for the Cyclones. But here comes the windup in the pitch, and swung on to left field. Looks like Bingham has a track on it. She makes and a catch, but she did not tag up at third. third. And that is out number three for the Cyclones. And a fortunate event for the Red Raiders. Lack of communication, I don't know what it is, but the Cyclones do get out of the jam. And we'll be heading to the bottom of the six with the Cyclones still maintaining that 5-2 to two lead. Yep, looks like Warnke has a nice hit, and the runner on third just went for home. And nice job. You look slater there. Bring it to me, bring it to me. Slater even looks over to second briefly to get her, but then there, Immels reminds Great her. Great communication by Immels. Yeah, that yeah. she did not tag up. So unfortunate event for the Red Raiders. That's that's base running situation awareness that you must know that uh, how many outs are inning. That's essential for a base runner, and it didn't happen, and Cyclones lucked out. I've got a to-do list and five acres of fresh air. Top three tools, hammer, screwdriver, front loader. 
Happiness is a drive over mower day. A John Deere dealer can teach tractors to anybody. And the right hands and iMatch Quick Hitch could probably cure most of the world's problems. That's how we run. And nothing runs like a deer. Van Wall is proud to be your dealer of choice. Find a location online at vanwall.com. The new 3,000-seat Sookup End Zone Club at Jack Trice Stadium will be the place to be on Cyclone Game Day. Catch Big 12 football while enjoying premium outdoor seating with access to a climate-controlled two-level lounge area overlooking the stadium. Benefits include a la carte food stations, a full-service cash bar, Wi-Fi, and large HD TVs. To get your Sookup End Zone Club seats, visit jacktristadium.org or call 515-294-5022 today. All right, and we resume play here in the bottom of the six with Allie Cowper leading off the, for the Cyclones here in the bottom of the six as she takes ball one. Again, Sarah, an unusual play <laughs> for the Cyclones, but it worked out in their favor last inning uh, to get out of that jam. But Capper, so just a slow hit back to the pitcher to first base for out number one uh, of the inning, which we will bring up next. Lexi Slater, uh, who had a great defensive stand uh, last inning with that hit right to her. And like you mentioned, Calling for the ball, she yep. knew that she did not tag up, and she knew veteran move by Lexi Slater there. Yep, another another part of the great infield. Uh, another senior, you know, we have our middle infielders are both seniors. We got um, Antion on the corner though, is a freshman. So those two seniors of Maddie Reese and Lexi Slater really anchoring that center of the infield is just key. It's mm -hmm. just that experience, that composure, that knowledge of the game is there. And you know, Slater's also had a home run, so it's been a yeah. good day for for Lexi, Lexi Slater. Slater. Yeah, she takes strike number two. Down early in an 0-2 count. She did have that uh, home run in the third inning shortly after Gomez's uh, grand slam. So we'll see what she does here with this 0-2 delivery. And looks like to be possibly a little, a little outside for ball one. And we'll see how much of a quick work Custer makes work of this cycle in this inning. Last two times she's been pitching, three up, three down the last two innings. So we'll see what she does here in the bottom of the six. Swung on, fouled off by Lexi Slater, which will keep the count at one and two. Cyclones still have that five to two lead. We have one out here in the bottom of the six. Don't forget, it is a double header today. So 30 minutes after this game wraps up, uh, game number two will get started. So we'll have a little bit of time off air, then you'll get to listen to us again for another wonderful game of and Cyclone And I know softball. you viewers are excited <laughs> about that. <sighs> it is, and like we said, if the, this rain holds off, even an overcast isn't bad day for softball. On my walk up here, I thought it was a beautiful day for softball as long as uh, the rain held off, which it did, so. That's good. All right, and Lex Slater chops one over to first base. She gathers it and touches first for the out. Warnicky there with a nice play. She's been a little busy there uh, over at yeah. first base this game, but out number two uh, for the Lady Raiders, which will bring up Maddie Reese, the second baseman uh, for the Cyclones, which you talked about her and Lexi Slater anchoring that middle part of that infield. Just that experience and that knowledge of the game and the confidence to know like what is going on when things get, get chaotic. So, you know, with uh, pitching by committee, though, things do get tough where you don't always have the same person in the mound. So, Pitcher is seen a lot of times as a leader on the field, but, you know, if it's a different pitcher, you got to have other leaders. And between the triangle that is Gomez and center, center uh, Slater and Reese, it's just solid, top to bottom of just thorough. And then Ooh, she takes one to right field. Not deep enough, got under it just a little too much as Miles makes the catch for the third out. Again, three up and three down uh, for Custer in that circle. We'll be heading to the top of the seventh uh, after the break. I am a helpful smile. I'm a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am. I. I am a helpful smile. I've been a helpful smile for 23 years. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am Ivy. On game day, 
The Cyclones look to score as many points as possible. This time, we're fighting for a zero. We want the number of people in Iowa waiting for a life-saving organ transplant to be zero. Working together, Iowa can be the first state in the nation where no one waits for a transplant. If you don't have a Y next to donor on your driver's license, go to iowadonornetwork.org to help nearly 600 Iowans waiting for their gift of life. I'm Fred Hoiberg, and I'm a registered organ and tissue donor. All right, welcome back to the Cyclone Sports Complex. As we will be heading to the top of the seventh with the Lady Raiders, we will begin with Scott at the bottom of the lineup, and then we will take it to the top of the batting order with Betty All and Tommy. All right, here we go. The Hopefully the, the final time. Cyclones have to take the field for this first game of the doubleheader today. I mean, arguably, Brittany Gomez might be the MVP. Uh, of this game yeah I mean it's a tough race I would yeah. say I would say uh, Gomez would be my number one followed up by an honorable mention by Lexi Slater which, absolutely and then I also think Ragantine did a great job in, in the, the circle, circle. Mm -hmm. yep again uh, just another thorough performance from the Cyclones top to bottom we've got both teams have no errors you know one hit separates them luckily the Cyclones are ahead with three runs yeah <laughs> <laughs> three extra runs I mean it, it's it's really comes down to just one swing of the bat which was that grand slam I mean that's that's a four run uh, you know, four run, you know, advantage for the Cyclones with just one swing of the bat. So we'll see if uh, uh, Immels can close out the game for the Cyclones. That's driven just foul, just out of the reach uh, of Antion there at third base and a trailing uh, Lexi Slater. So that will move the count to one in one uh, for Brooke Scott. Brooke Scott was pinch hit for uh, last inning, but she has re-entered. So that's, she's all good to go. If she has one more sub, then she has to stay out of the game but at this point in the game it doesn't really matter yeah. so letting her have at it throwing everything but the kitchen sink to hopefully uh score three runs or more here for the lady raiders and oh nice off-speed pitch there uh by immels uh i don't think it mattered whether she went or not that was a strike for immels yep. there to bring the count to one or two froze the batter froze me a little bit it froze, yeah <laughs> i mean i was i thought it would cross but it still hadn't crossed yet so yep all right here we go with a one-two delivery by Immels in the dirt to bring the count to two and two. All right, here we go with the wind up in the delivery from Immels and high and outside to take the count to three and two. You know, she doesn't really want to, you know, let let uh, Brooke Scott get on base uh, mm -hmm. and allow uh, a runner on base to potentially get this game even closer than what it needs to be for the Cyclones. So we'll see what she does here with this 3-2 uh, delivery. There's just some mental victory about getting that first batter, and she did, especially on a strikeout. Way to knock down that first Beautiful. batter. You know, just not letting a runner on right away is always such a big confidence boost. We'll take a look here again at the strike. Again, making those Red Raiders swing under... <laughs> Uh, Alan is up here trying to mimic that pitch. It's quite entertaining. That was beautiful. It was beautiful. She just released and rolled that wrist over. Yeah, put a little spin on it that uh, Scott was not able to do anything with. So then we're back to the top of the lineup with center fielder Jordan Bedial. Bedial has been a threat in other games, but the Cyclones have been able to minimize her. Slaps one to the Cyclones dugout for strike number one of her at bat. We are in the top of the seventh with one out with the Cyclones with the lead, 5-2 to two with Jordan Bettyall up to bat with an 0-1 count. And, you know, since uh, Immels has came in, she's actually been pitch excuse me, pitching very well for the Cyclones to close mm -hmm. out this game. Yep. Again, pitching my committee is really effective when both when all the pitchers are working and playing their own game. The Cyclones pitchers do a nice job of being effective at what they know best, and that really just can throw batters off and... Maybe it won't work for a whole game ever, but what's nice is we have four great pitchers who can really balance each other out and create a good dynamic in the circle. Absolutely. And Hildreth, got to give credit to her. Four different pitchers is tough to do, and she does a great job behind the plate at all times. And coming mm -hmm. in, not always didn't earn that starting position at the beginning of the year, but because of some injuries, she's here now and just making really effective use, and her bat's starting to come alive. So really good work by the Cyclones here late in the season to – really work what they know best absolutely here comes the one two delivery by Immels and swung on to Lexi Slater for out number two 
great play by Lexi Slater there to grab out number two of the inning. And we will bring up Devin Tomey, the designated hitter uh, for Texas Tech, up next. Again, Tomey in previous series has, has been a threat. Not as much today. Um, two strikeouts and a walk. So Cyclone pitchers have done a nice job of minimizing the threat of Tomey. And so we'll see what she does here in the last uh, chance for the Red Raiders in this game. Takes a ball outside. Moving the count to 1-0. and oh. As you see there, game two coming up next against the Lady Raiders. The doubleheader 30 minutes after this game concludes. So here is Immels with the 1-0 delivery. Swung on and fouled off by Devin Tomey. Oh. Kind of, oh, it might reach in. It, it nicked the, that car a little bit, <laughs> but nothing too, nothing too major. But as you saw there, she kind of jammed her up uh, on the inside and just really nothing much to do there, but just fouled it off and lived to fight another day. So I, it, it was a great pitch by Immels. Got her swing and moving the count to 1-1. One, one, so. And it's a little high and outside. A little, little high. Tomy takes ball two, moving the count to 2-1. Two and one. It would be really great for Immos, you know, since she's coming. She's made great work. And to end the game on a three up and three down, Yep. Uh, no matter what pitcher, no matter who you are, no matter the score is, it's always great to end a game on a three up and three down. So exactly. Here's that 2-1 delivery. Same place that she fouled it off earlier, but she decides to hold off this time for ball number three, moving the count to three and one. Immos most likely, I think, will probably go after her, not wanting to put a runner on base mm -hmm. uh, to bring up. Uh, Christy Belshi uh, up next for the Red Raiders. So here comes that 3-1 delivery. And looked a little outside and base on balls for Devin Tomey. It was a good job by her to work uh, Immols for that ball. And now, like I said, we will bring up the catcher, uh, Christy, or excuse me, Christy Belshi for the Raiders. And, you know, it's not a bad time for a walk. I'm never a fan of walks, but with two outs and up by three, uh, it's a it's an okay walk to give, uh, rather than you know maybe a home run or a Absolutely. really nice hit. You know it's a different momentum thing than a hit would be. So if you're gonna give up a base in this situation. Walk isn't too bad. Yeah, you don't. You know there's sometimes you just gotta cut your losses in half and yep. don't give them something over the plate. Yep. Uh, that's right in their wheelhouse. And you know if she wanted to swing, she would have. If not, she took the base on balls. Lived to fight another day by Immels. And here she is attacking Christy Belshi with a 1-0 delivery. Nice pitch there for a strike. Moving the count to 1-1 one one with Devin Tomey on first. The Cyclones do have that 5-2 to two lead in the top of the seventh with two outs. And it looked like uh, Belshi was not going to swing until she got a strike. You know, smart of the Red Raiders to make Paris Immels work because, you know, Red Raiders are in less of a flex spot, so no good swinging at strikes they don't actually want. That 1-1 one, one delivery a little high. Moving that count to 2-1. Two and one. And was really wanting, a, you know, a great pitch here. Moving the count to three and one uh, would put her in a bad situation, possibly putting two runners on with the tying run uh, at home plate. So we'll see with this 2-1 delivery. Swung on just past the first baseman into right field. Missed the cutoff throw to Lexi, and both runners still advance. So runners will be on second and third with the tying run coming up to bat in Leah Hobson. Just, I mean, that was just out of the reach of Spend Love there at first. Might have clipped her hand a little bit. She's shaking it, checking, checking things are all good. Initially, right after the hit, you saw her mm -hmm. kind of grab, like, check on her hand. So she keeps squeezing it. So yep. maybe, maybe something happened there. But trying to get some life back into it. <laughs> that was that was a good hit by uh, Belshi. Mm -hmm. And like we talked about, you know, giving that walk wasn't a big thing. If you can attack that next hitter, yeah. unfortunately, she got on base. Now the tying run is at. Home plate and Leah hops in here. Now that walk is looking definitely not <laughs> as good. I retract my words about being a walk being okay. You always play the <laughs> odds. So you, and here's that first pitch for strike. Nice job. It does look mm -hmm. like the Red Raiders will wait until Immels gives them a strike. Definitely work that pitch count. You see why they're top in the country and <clears throat> walks earned. It's something that they're good at, and it's smart at this point in the game to really make Immels and the Cyclones work for those outs. There are two outs with runners on second and third for Hobson. Ball outside. Going to move that count to one uh, and one. But 
uh, and you know, I, I, it might bring up uh, with Ashley Fultz, you know, up next with a single a fly out and a strikeout, would you possibly put her on to have a force out at anywhere? Probably not. Personally, yeah. I would. I mean, you, 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 you I mean, you see it more in the major leagues. Yeah, intentional uh, walks are less of a thing in softball. But now with the count at two and one uh, for Leah Hobson with the two one delivery by Immels on its way. Little low, gonna move that count to three and one now. What do you do here? Do you do you throw a strike or you you, you throw it you know off the plate? And if she swings, good for her. If not, you know then it's it's yep. a walk and you live to fight another. What would you do here? I throw a strike, just not over the plate. I would throw a decent one. Oh, Oobly. nice and high though. It's gonna give to left field of the warning track, and uh, she got it. Great catch by Bingham to end the inning and to end the game. Wow. So Cyclones, thanks to a lovely catch by Kathleen Bingham out there in left field, have won game one, 5-2 against the Red Raiders.